Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we are going to carry on our configuration mini series by taking a look at creating a configured assembly. Now, configurations can apply to individual bodies or parts. We can also do assemblies inside of a single design, but oftentimes when you have individual components that are configurable, they'll be in externally referenced designs. And so we're going to take a look at that workflow today. If you followed along with the first video, carry on with your own parts. If you had any difficulty, you can go to the description of this video and download the supplied data sets. However, I will say I don't fully know if a shared link with a downloadable configured design will actually work. Keep in mind, if you are working on a hobby license, you do not have access to configurations as far as I know. But if you're on a commercial or an EDU license, then you will be able to use configurations. So once again, I strongly recommend that you build your own designs. But if you want to try to download these files, go for it on the share links. But I cannot guarantee that they will work. So when we're talking about configured components, what we have here is going to be four variations of a NEMA motor and four variations of a NEMA motor mount. What we want to do is build an assembly with both of those. Now, we could simply bring the configured component, the NEMA motor, into the motor mount assembly, but there's a better way. And the reason I say there's a better way is because when we create variations of a design like this, those variations in addition to configuring inserted components can get pretty hard to manage. So we're gonna start a new design. We're gonna set up whatever unit system we want, inch or metric in this case. It really won't matter for what we're doing, but we're gonna go ahead and set ours to inch. And then we're gonna save this. Before you ever insert an externally referenced component, you need to have a save design. So I'm gonna call this my NEMA assembly. I cannot type, we'll go ahead and do that, NEMA assembly. So now that I have these, I also want to close out both my motor configuration and the motor mount. I'm going to expand my data panel, and then I want to drag and drop these in. I'm going to start with the motor mount by dragging that one in, and then it's going to ask me to pick the configuration. You'll notice that all four are available. We're going to start with the NEMA 8, and we're going to say OK. Now the first component is going to come in at the origin. You can see that it took a little while to load because it has to bring in some additional information. We'll say OK. And then I'm going to right click and ground this. This is going to lock it in place. While it's not strictly required, it is something that I am going to do for this design. The next thing that we want to do is we want to bring in the NEMA motor. Uh, so again, I'm going to select it, drag it in. I'm going to pick which configuration I want, in this case, 8, and we'll say OK. Now, this will also be placed at the origin, which is the correct location because of the way both parts were designed. Uh, however, we don't want to rely on those locations being correct. So I'm going to pull this back and we're going to use joints. Now we can use as built joints, which would be perfectly fine. But in the case of something like this, I, I want to use the joint option to make sure that I'm selecting the appropriate location. So we'll select joint. I'm going to take the whole location here. I'm going to place it at this whole location and we'll add a rigid joint. Now, the reason that I like to do this and move the components away is because if we're using an as built joint that's making use of the components design location, when we're inserting externally referenced designs, there is a chance that they could move around if the designs are not referencing the same coordinate system. So, this is a much safer bet. So, with these in place, the next thing that we want to do is create configurations. So we're going to configure the component by selecting configure. Now, once again, it tells us things that we can do, visibility, suppression, parameters, materials, appearances, and so on. Uh, we're not dealing with sheet metal or plastic rules, but those are also available because they're essentially, uh, they're essentially parameters, whether they're user or feature. So now the next thing that we want to do is select the things that we want to configure. So anything that's highlighted in blue on the screen is configurable. That's features in the timeline. That's the components that we see here in the browser, as well as visibility of everything. So I'm going to select the NEMA 8 motor, and we're going to select the insert option and say OK. And we'll do the same thing here. We're going to select the bracket and the motor both with insert and say OK. So now in our configuration dialog, I'm going to rename this first one. I'm going to call this NEMA 8 because that's the size of the motor that we're referencing. 
And then I'm going to add three additional configurations. So again, add three, hit plus. We'll rename each of these. Second one will be NEMA 11. The third one, just like when we configured our parts, is going to be NEMA 14. And the next one here is going to be NEMA 17. Now, as I mentioned in the part video, if we are creating a configurable motor, typically what you would see is that a NEMA 8 will have different variations on the body length and some features, and then an 11 would have variations on that and so on. So typically what you would see is, is con a configurable NEMA 8, a configurable 11, a 14, and 17, and so on. What we did here in this series is we are really focusing on the overall process and not so much worried about those little details. So as you would imagine, what we're going to do is just go through, pick the configuration that we want for both the motor and the motor mount. And we'll do the same thing here. We have to let it rebuild each configuration. So it does take a second because what it's doing is it's going and it's fetching that information from the original design, which is an external reference, and it's loading that part into our memory. Uh, the last one is going to be a little funky because it's currently active by that blue bar. So when I select the NEMA 17 motor, you'll notice that it's going to change its size and, and location. And until we select 17 for both of them, it's just going to be a little bit off. But now we've got all those selected, we can close this configuration out and we can toggle our way through each. So eight, we should have an aluminum bracket. You can see that the holes all line up. When we go to 11, everything increases in size. As we rotate around, you can see that we've got a small gap around the motor based on the way it was designed. 14 is the same. And again, the steel bracket material has come through and 17 as well. Now, this is a pretty common workflow. And again, you could theoretically design all these parts in a single design rather than having them configured in their own designs and then inserting them. But there is really a lot of power, especially if you've got commonly used parts like hardware or motor mounts, or in this case, NEMA motors. You wanna make sure that you can pull the motor into whatever design you want without having to bring the bracket as well. So it's much better in a case like this to configure them in their own individual files and bring them into their assembly state. What we're gonna do is we're gonna save this, make sure that we do understand that once we have configured a design that is saved as a different data set, it is a configurable data set. All those configurations are stored and calculated on the cloud, just like all our designs. Uh, so keep that in mind that we, we wanna just be aware that that data and the offloading of that data happens and it processes in the cloud. It's not directly done inside your design. But that's the basic process that we need to follow to configure an assembly. It's much quicker and easier than configuring the individual parts because we really didn't have to worry about dimensions or parameters or anything else, just simply configuring the inserted components. Now, if you have any questions on this or anything else to deal with configurations, please leave a comment. In the third video in the series, we are going to be tackling detailed drawings with configured parts. So make sure that you do stick around for that one, which will be out a couple days after this video. If you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.